So this is looking at Pebbly Beach. Um, this formation is uh, in one of the lowermost uh, formations of the Sydney Basin. I just wanted to go um, along the cliff face and just um, point out some of the different um, units and uh, laminations and things like that to give you an idea of some different things to look at when you, um, or if you get the chance to visit this uh, um, fascinating location. So this base unit here is a, um, a massive sandstone unit and you can see um, that it's been um, heavily bioturbated and um, looking up, uh, can't really see much in that but we'll be able to make out more as we move along um, due to the erosion kind of um, makes looking at some of the different layers easier. So there's another look at the, the massive sandstone unit at the bottom and we can see some of the um, bioturbation um, that's occurred. Um, now there's different um, different reports of different um, different trace fossils and things like that that have, that have caused those particular um, bioturbations but um, I might get to that later. Now this, um, this particular small unit here um, is referred to as lenticular bedding and we can see it's made up of um, more on this this isn't what we're looking at now I'm just pointing out some of the different um, different trace fossils and things um, looking back up at the lenticular bedding we can see um, that it's made up of more um, mudstone um, or siltstone than uh, sand so that's uh, referred to as lenticular um, looking down we can see various um, drop stones um, they appear to be fairly rounded, so they may be um, storm deposited um, as opposed to ice deposited. Um, so that could be due to um, you know a large um, influx of um, of the water, um, or it could again be that they've been dropped by ice and um, have been picked up um, from a stream um, by an ice rift or something like that. So looking along the plateau, just to give you an idea, this video is pretty haphazard in the way that I shot it and you um, may not get a great reference as to what I'm looking at but I'll just try to kind of keep up with what I was doing. So again um, just coming in a bit closer we're looking at a, um, a small um, conglomerate um, bed um, it had some fairly large uh, sort of dropstone clasps in there. Um, I think we've moved a bit further down on the rock unit and um, we're coming back up. Yeah sorry this is all over the place. Um, here we can see some planar laminations, um, also known as rhythmic um, layering, and um, these are deposited in fairly sort of um, low, low current um, sort of um, energy environments. Um, moving around, we can see some more trace fossils. Um, I'll put a link to um, some various um, descriptions of what these could be. Um, my identification of trace fossils and things like that is uh, still pretty, pretty poor. Um, okay, just give you another overview of um, overview of the of the formation, the cliff face. Um, there's quite a few of these shots by the looks of it. So the Pebbly Beach Formation has been um, has been deposited by fluvial flows, so mainly water deposited. Um, now that's uh, quite an interesting um, view. You can see actually in that middle layer um, that we just saw just then is um, you can actually see some fossils, um, some um, bivalves and brachiopods and things like that. So moving up to the cliff face again, um, sorry this is a bit confusing because you can't actually see in relation to um, whereabouts in the formation we're looking at. But what you can see is um, you know, some bioturbation and this here looks like um, some wavy bedding. So it's half, half, um, you know, half sand, half silt um, formed by um, low energy environments, kind of almost like um, ripple laminations. And that's, that's quite a big Quite a big, um, quite a big unit. That um, that wavy, wavy lamination unit um, coming up a bit closer to it. Actually, it could be almost classified as flazer because it does appear to have more of more sand than than mud. And uh, this layer here, um, 
tool back at the, the Flazer Wavy laminations, and you can see that. You can see the various current ripples and things like that um, within that particular unit. And so that was um, been deposited by sort of water flows. Okay, so what we see here is um, a good example of an angular class. Now this is um, deposited by, um, or known as a dropstone, and deposited by ice. And um, I'm not sure what I was trying to show you there. Um, so that's looking um, back along the cliff face, um, looking south, I believe. Now, I think um, what I'm trying to show you here is a um, is a fossil layer or the Eurypodasma layer and we can see various drop stones and things like that um, within that small layer. Uh, I think I'm pointing out um, various trace fossil burrows. Um, there's quite a lot all, all throughout um, the various beds and units um, of this formation. There are there's, um, trace fossils. Um, we can see some more um, wavy laminations uh, moving up. Yep. Okay, so I came around the cliff face um, heading north and um, a large uh, chunk of rock had fallen off. So I decided to just split it open because um, it looked like it had um, some fossils in it. So I took to it with a hammer and just um, split it open. And um, what was revealed is um, some plant debris or um, um, now these this may have been um, plants that occurred um, locally within this particular environment but I think due to sort of the, the mash-up and mix-up that um, these may have been um, you know, st um, storm deposited um, but uh, yeah that the block I found was actually um, pretty full of, uh, of fossils um, I'll have to do a little bit more investigation to see um, how this particular bed um, um, came about, um, or how the fossils came about to be in there. But um, yeah, it was pretty um, prolific with um, with plant debris. So I'm just heading south again, and now this rock platform is is quite interesting. Um, what I'm going to show you within the platform itself is various um, trace fossils. Um, here is a large um, drop stone and um, there's, there's a lot of those to be seen as well so drop stones have um, been ice deposited. Um, now these are the interesting um, trace fossils that I wanted to show you. Now they've been um, um, sort of iron replaced um, due to sort of iron leaching within the, within the um, sediment itself which um, has left kind of nice sort of rusty um, metallic um, trace fossils and um, I will put a link um, in the bottom and just um, just with some references as to what those could be so again what I think I want to show you is the various the various trace fossil burrows they are quite nicely preserved and uh, people come from all around the world to um, check these out. Um, there's been quite a few um, papers and reports done on these on these trace fossils. But what's interesting about um, the trace fossils and um, biotidation of the Sydney Basin is that it actually occurs all throughout, um, not in the upper sandstone layers of um, the Hawkesbury and European sandstone, but in most of the silt and mudstones, extending all the way up to um, Wambara, we can see various examples of uh, trace fossils. Um, yep, so there's, a, there's another example. I think I'm going to show you quite a few different examples. So these are, these are made by wane, wa um, sorry, worms um, in, the, in, the, in the mud and um, they'll just go through kind of like worms today and um, filter out any nutrients and usually the burrows themselves are where these um, worms have um, congregated. The sediment is um, tends to be a little bit more sandy. This is due to um, sort of the higher um, carbonaceous uh, nutrients being removed and um, kind of just leaving the, the more um, silica-rich um, sands. So I'm just moving along um, this bed, and again um, we can see that it's. Um, 
fairly lenticular, so um, sort of tidal, um, sort of wave, um, wave um, sort of dominated. I think I'm just having an investigation to see if we can find any any more sort of examples of uh, fossils. Um, I'm just, just going to go crazy with showing you these these, these trace fossils. various burrow holes and things like that. That's a nice example of um, sort of a bioturbated um, bed with um, various burrows and things like that. So this, uh, these uh, Particular beds probably occurred below storm wave base um, as they're as they're vertical. It was, uh, the platform on the um, on the north side actually has some great examples of, um, as I mentioned before, um, trace fossils and things like that. So if you're interested in trace fossils, definitely come to this location and um, and um, have a look for yourself. Um, so I think what I'm going to do now is just go back in um, towards the cliff face and just see what we can, kind of the story we can see. So here we've got some, some cross bedding and you can see the direction of current. Um, I always think that's pretty interesting to check out. You can see where it, it bed ends and um, another bed sort of forms over the top of it and herringbone cross stratification. And here I think we can see sort of a fairly um, carbonaceous layer. Um, can actually tell for certain what I was looking at there. So I'm just walking north along the um, along the rock plateau, and I think I'm just going to come um, turn around and, and come back and uh, check out some more. Uh, so we've got some um, some wave ripples. I, I find wave ripples really interesting as well because you can tell the sort of the um, paleo wave current direction. Now these appear to be fairly symmetrical, so. When they're symmetrical, um, they're not leaning towards either either way, or happen, hasn't got like a, um, a sharp lee side, we can um, see. Oh, maybe that's kind of got a little bit more of a sharp lee side on the right. Anyway, what these um, current ripples tell us is the direction in which the current was flowing, and it also indicates that the the water was not very deep uh, at that particular or when that particular um, bed was formed. Okay, we're moving back along and looking at some more um, trace fossils. You, I'm not sick of looking at trace fossils yet. Um, I'm sure I've got some more for you coming up. Okay. So the last look here I think is um, just of some more drop stones and um, we can see that uh, it looks like it's made up of various angular and rounded class, um, probably um, sort of ice rifted um, drop stones. And I think I'm just going to show you a couple of different examples of this. Yeah, that looks like fairly angular class. But, but it does, yeah, there is some rounded, some rounded uh, class of stones in there as well. So just finishing up. Um, yeah, this is uh, Pebbly Beach. Um, if you're interested in um, this kind of thing, come and check it out. Um, there's a lot of information on this, uh, but you may have to dig around. Uh, thank you.